Emotep might actually be the single best epic commander in Rise of Kingdoms. Stick around in this video to learn a lot about how the game works, why it is that this commander is so strong, his best pairings, an update to the order in which you invest in epic commanders, and more. Hello my friends and welcome back. I'm Chiskool Gaming and this video is sponsored by the makers of Rise of Kingdoms and today we've got to talk all about Emotep, who is arguably the strongest epic commander in the game. Why is that the case? Very simply, he has a rage reduction effect and he makes everybody, everybody, five targets take more all damage. But I'm getting ahead of myself. In this video, I'm going to talk about his skills and why he's so good. I'm going to prove to you that his area of effect is not only for increasing the damage taken of the target, but also a rage reduction. And I'm going to give you the very best pairings for this commander. Use those timestamps that are in the description to jump ahead if there's some part of this that you think you already know. So first, let's very quickly review his entire kit. From there, I'm going to talk about these rage reduction effects and let's just get started, shall we? The active skill inflicts a debuff on up to five targets that lasts for three seconds increasing their all damage taken by 30%. And when Ebotep is the secondary commander, the target also gains 50 less rage per second for three seconds. This is a big deal. This is in some ways better than rage gained. And I'll explain that in just a little bit. Second skill, 30% of stats, 15% attack, 15% defense, very typical stuff for an epic commander. Love to see it. From there, 7% health for city defense only. Does not work in a flag, does not work in a fort, does not work in a holy site. City defense only. If you use him to defend your city, and I will argue he is top tier with Kusunoki or Sun Tzu, use him as the secondary for defending your city. This is very important. The only way you get the rage reduction effect as described in the expertise skill and the active is by virtue of having him as the secondary commander. From there, next skill. When this commander's troops are attacked, there is a 10% chance of inflicting a debuff on the target for three seconds, reducing this skill damage dealt by 15%. This triggers once every five seconds. Now, the expertise skill, technically, I have already read to you. It is enhancing the active skill. This is a commander that you must use expertise if you're going to use him. I will argue the expertise is the best part of this commander, and that is applying this extra rage reduction effect. No, I'm not even sure where to begin here. Do I start by telling you why it is that rage reduction effects are so good or by proving to you that this is AOE? I think I want to talk about why rage reduction is so good. This is a more technical aspect of Rise of Kingdoms and feel free to skip ahead if you don't want to understand why it works. You just want to understand simply that it does. But the way that rage works in this game is very straightforward. When your rage bar meets the rage requirement of the primary commander in a march. There's two commanders in your march, the secondary and the primary. When the rage requirement of the primary commander is met, first, the primary commander uses their active skill, there's a second of downtime, and then the secondary commander uses their active skill. Now, in any one turn, you typically gain around 100 base rage when you're attacking something and they're attacking you back. This is a big oversimplification, and I've made a much more detailed video explaining this. Card will be up in the top. I'll remind you about that at the end so you can watch that video later. But importantly, there is also a rage cap because you would think, well, gosh, if ra gaining rage means I use my active skills faster, then I just want to gain infinite amounts of rage and find as many ways as I can to gain rage so that I can use my active skills every like three seconds, right? Well, wrong. Wick Gaming, another content creator, uh, popularized the fact that there is actually a 220 rage cap per turn. And the way that that rage cap works is fairly astonishing. Basically, the way that it works is you gain all the buffs that give you rage, and then the game says, okay, we're going to cap that at 220. Then, and only then, do they apply rage reduction effects. You see why this is so powerful? Rage reduction effects could take a commander's rage gain down to zero on a given turn. That's a big deal. It does not matter how many rage gain effects they have. It's irrelevant to rage reduction because rage reduction applies after the fact that they've already gained rage. Now, 
I don't think you can reduce the rage that they already have accumulated. However, you can make it so that in any one turn, a target potentially gains zero rage, which is a big deal. For this reason, rage reduction effects are arguably much better than rage gain effects. By the way, if you're enjoying this video so far and are learning things about how the game works, do me a huge favor, throw a like on the video and consider subscribing to the channel for more videos designed to help you get value and smash your enemies. Thank you for supporting the channel. It means a lot to me. And this active skill over here, and you can see why I'm saying he's probably the best epic in the game. It's so strong because not only are we making the up to five targets take 30% more damage, but we're halting the rage gen. A fair amount, okay? 50 per second for three seconds is a big deal. And although the wording of this says, um, when Emotep is the secondary commander, the target also gains 50 less rage per second, I can prove to you that it applies to all five of those targets, or at least more than one. And let me show you this report. I took a fairly unconventional combo outside of my city to hit some barbs, just to see exactly how the area of effect damage and also the debuffs from Emotep would work. And so I used Esong area of effect damage to pull multiple barbs onto my march. This is called uh, barb chaining. And that's actually a really important technique to understand. The card will be up in the top and I'll remind you of this video later. You can get a ton of value by chaining together a lot of barbarians with AOE damage, free barbs. But I will show you, this is the second barb. You know this is the second barb because I didn't actually kill it, they actually killed off my march, whereas the first barb I targeted, I actually finished off entirely. And so you can see in the battle log for this second barb that the area of effect damage from Esong, our side did AoE, Esong did AoE, that aggroed the barb in and that's the first turn recorded. Then Emotep on turn three used his active skill. That little cog next to our side tells you the active skill was used. I can prove that to you. Here it is, Emotep cast High Priest. On the next turn is the first turn where Emotep's debuff would apply. The 50 rage reduction, and there it is. The Barbarian Patrol lost 50 rage due to the despair effect <laughs> of Emotep's High Priest. And that skill lasts for two more turns, so the next two turns, they're losing 50 rage. And it is basically halting the rage uh, production of these barbs. It's Kind of nuts. So at this point in the video, you understand more about the game than 99% of players because you now understand the basics of how Rage works and why Emotep is so insanely strong. But I do want to point out some downfalls of Emotep and his active skill. First of all, you might think, oh man, you'd want like hundreds of these Emoteps out on the field. Every player brings one. And I kind of feel like in the early game, maybe every player should be bringing Emotep. That seems like a good plan. However, I will point out that active skills do not stack with each other. So if two Emotaps are using that rage reduction effect on the same target, only one of them is going to apply. So it's not like you can make the target uh, gain literally zero rage from only Emotaps. You need other commanders to influence the rage of the target. I'm going to talk about that in just a minute. Also, this is true of the all damage taken. A very popular commander is Alexander the Great, who on his active skill makes targets take more all damage. Well, the problem is that these abilities will not stack. Um, the rage reduction from Emotep might apply, while the all damage taken from Alexander the Great is active, but you don't get double the amount of all damage taken Unfortunately, that would be insane if the active skill here would make it so that you could do so much all damage taken. And the reason I say the active skill, even though this is on the expertise, is that it is modifying the active skill. So with that said, I still think Emotep is absolutely amazing as a secondary commander only. And as a reminder, talents on secondary commanders don't do anything. Only the talents when you have the commander as the primary is going to apply. So I haven't even put points on Emotep because I'm only going to ever use him as a secondary commander. With that said, um, if we go in here and look at the best epic pairings, I am going to make the argument that your best shot is Herman. And the reason that I like Herman for open fielding is that first of all, 
he is going to also reduce rage on the target and silence them. So you could do some wicked things to an enemy, um, reducing their rage, making it so they can't use active skills, and also he gives march speed, which is really good for open field combat, and also he has a chance to give you extra rage, which means you can fire off Emotep's active skill even faster. I really like this particular pairing, and if you wanted to go a more utilitarian-ish route um, and AoE damage, Kusunoki is an interesting choice because he will clear debuffs off of your own march. Kind of cool. More powerful than you might actually think. And he does some AoE damage, and he does some extra damage over time. But he's missing march speed, and if you don't have march speed, I feel like for the open field, you always want to shoot for that march speed. That, that is my sense of uh, how you want to run open field marches. So I think that using Herman and then with the secondary of Emotep, that's probably the best way to run it. I don't actually think that Kira is a great choice. Not that she isn't necessarily a fine commander to pair with here, but by the time you've got Kira expertised, you have to only get her from Soroli. This is just going to take forever, man. By that point, you've got way better combos that you're probably looking at, and this won't even be a relevant topic of conversation, okay? One other early game commander you might have that I think would be a fine, very, very early game pairing would be Boudica and Emotep using primarily archers. Similarly, you could try to get away with Joan of Arc primary and Emotep. I will point out that the support tree doesn't really care about doing skill damage. This is important because Emotep doesn't do any. So that's a really nice synergy there. And also the rejuvenate talents in Joan of Arc in the support tree actually um, give more rage than you get <laughs> in the equivalent in the skill tree. So in that regard, there's a little bit of anti-synergy with a commander like Herman who is boosting skill damage of the secondary commander when your secondary in this case is not doing any skill damage at all. And if you wanted to look at legendary commanders, I mean, I think Ethelfled primary is the obvious choice. If you use mostly archers in her march, then you do get the benefit of the archer stats, but even if you don't, it's not that big a deal. I think that the two paired together are a fairly high utility, high impact march, but anytime you see an Ethel primary on the field, it does present itself as a higher priority target. People know to kind of hunt for that. I think that although you could pair with Esong as an example, the downfall of pairing with a commander like Esong is that he boosts skill damage and you get none of that benefit on an Emotep secondary. Sure, they're both archers, but that's really the beginning and end of the synergy of those two commanders. And although El Cid has some extra march speed, I mean, I guess you could pair them together. He's still got the skill tree, right? He also has a disarm effect, removing their active skills and normal attacks for one turn. I mean, this wouldn't be a bad pair. I actually think it would be a fine pair in the grand scheme of things, uh, but not absolutely amazing. I think your main places to look in the early game are going to be with Ethel, Joan, Boudica, because you probably have got her early for barbarian hunting and the extra experience she gives. Um, and Kusu, and I think I already mentioned Herman, but there you go. Those are probably the most likely commanders you would pair with in the early game. And for what it's worth, I don't think people really use CPO that much in the early game, but if you were, I guess that would be an okay pairing as well. Now, I'm currently on my farm account, which has some really crazy stuff. Like, I have an expertise to YSS on my farm. It's a weird situation. So I'm just going to update my Canyon team to put in Emotep and show you how does the team perform? And I will make the argument that if you're using Emotep in Canyon, that he really ought to be in the front row. Because remember, his fourth skill will reduce the skill damage of a target, but only if he is being directly attacked. So you want that Emotep to be in the front row. Now, the place where I'm going to go and put him is, weirdly enough, I think going to be... God, do I put him with my YSS where I have crazy equipment, or do I put him with the Joan of Arc where I basically have none? I guess I'll put him with the YSS. What the heck? Here we go. We drop the Emotep into the lineup. We change the configuration of the troops. And obviously, you do need to have equipment that kind of matches here. I, um, I just have a total mishmash of equipment, so it doesn't really matter. That's good enough. And then I do want Ethel in this lineup instead of the unmaxed Caesar. So I'm going to make a few changes over here. Also, I'm going to adjust the balance of these troops. You do really want to have 
a blend of troops here so that any one troop type doesn't get kind of knocked out of the march. And I think that's a better defense. But will it work well on offense? Let's do some battles and find out. Now, keep in mind, my team stays really low ranked on my farm because, like, I mean, I haven't put equipment on the majority of the commanders here. So we'll see if we can't maneuver to a couple additional victories. And if we can't see the Emotep sort of reducing the rage on these targets, let's let's get a sense of how this looks here. The Emotep is all the way down here, so the all damage is not going to apply to these two marches up top. I still feel like that was probably an okay way to configure this, and honestly, <laughs> I think I'm just dramatically outclassed by this team in the grand scheme of things. I mean, these marches are a lot stronger than mine, but their positioning might allow me to just kind of win even though I shouldn't. Maybe not, though. Oh my god, this is, this is a disaster. Oh, maybe Canyon is not where I'll be able to show you how good this commander is or isn't. I, I'm losing this for sure. Yeah, GG. I told you my farm account was not very good. Maybe I need to put it... I don't even know where I would put it. You know You know what? Maybe I just need to do this on my restart account, which is a much stronger account, currently sitting in the top 20 in Canyon, and see if it performs better there. Maybe that is the better benchmark. But let's just do like one, one more shot here <laughs> before I switch it up to a team where maybe we can get a better sense of things. So here we go. One more swing in. This team is so far from meta that it's perhaps hard to assess. And what, <clears throat> I mean, okay, I'm up against a Julius Caesar Sundock, and I'm losing, maybe? <laughs> I don't know, man. What a world. Uh, maybe I should just cut all this footage out, or maybe this is just funny to see. I'm honestly not even sure where I sit with all this right now. I think I win this. Yeah, I, I'm going to win this one. Okay, good. Um, Let's maybe jump over to my restart and see how this goes. Okay, so now that I'm looking at it, I actually don't think I would use Emotep on my restart. And although he's the best epic in the game, arguably, I actually feel like I've got a stronger lineup here without him. That's in part because of my equipment. The only march where I could actually swap him in would be the Boudicca Prime march, and I think I'd rather even just have a 5-5-1-1 Boudicca Prime. So all that to say, Emotep is probably the best epic commander, but he's still also only an epic commander. And I think probably that even though I tried to put him into my Trajan march, right, just to see, I'm probably better off with the 5-5-1-1 Mulan with the museum relic. I think I'm just better off there. I guess I'll wrap things up here by showing you this footage where I was battling the barbarians and just watch the rage bar right now. Look at the rage of these guys. It just stops, especially on the commander that I'm not hitting directly because that's one way they get rage is by being hit. So, I mean, I really just like completely halt the rage of the secondary commander. And that's one of Emotep's strengths on top of the all damage. I think that he brings a massive amount of utility to group fights. And in fact, pretty much every player at the start of the game ought to consider Emotep as one of their very first commander investments. I will still make the claim that going with Britain is one of the best, if not the best, starting civilization, followed perhaps by China, and people will make the argument that you could switch those around. I really like having a peacekeeper who does extra damage to barbs, um, because you're going to actually need that support at the start of the game, especially if you're free to play, plus getting 20% more experience seems really good on your commanders at the start of the game. Oh, and not to mention the training speed is really good if you go with Britain. But anyways, without getting too in-depth on that, your first couple commanders are either Boudicca because you started with her, or Sun Tzu, and then the next commander you work on is, if you went with Britain, going to be either... Sun Tzu, or it's going to be uh, Emotep. And then once you're done with one of those, then you do the other. So if you did Sun Tzu, then you would do Emotep next. And then from there, I think that Joan of Arc is a pretty solid choice. So again, like the first four commanders that you probably work on that are epic are Boudicca, Sun Tzu, Emotep, and also Joan of Arc. And that puts you in a really good spot with epics that are some of the longest lasting that I think you'll find. 
And if you really wanted to make a beeline for those most important epics, I think at the cost of being able to hunt barbarians, going with China, then going and working on Emotep after you finish Sun Tzu, and then Joan of Arc, and then maybe doing Herman to have him for the open field, would be just super reasonable. But I'm going to make a dedicated video talking more about that investment order soon. So subscribe to the channel so you don't miss it. And as a reminder, there are a number of videos I mentioned earlier. The card will be up in the top. Just tap the little info button for more information on rage mechanics and more. And until next time, you have fun smashing the kingdom.